Hi, Eric Gibo, EricGibo.com, and today I'm going to speak to you about my Hasselblad 503CW. Let's start. Well, with all these people speaking about full frame, APS-C, micro four third, medium format, uh, I thought, well, I'm going to speak about my medium format camera, which is this Hasselblad 503CW. And uh, a few days ago, uh, Hasselblad uh, presented the new version of the 1DX, uh, the Mark II, this is, which is a digital medium format camera. And uh, they also uh, made us a big surprise uh, because they communicated that they will make again a new digital bag for this camera. There was already a CFV uh, 50, 50 megapixels, uh, 39, a 16. They've made several, but then they sell them for a couple of years and then they stop selling them. So they will uh, make a new one. So uh, is this the right time to buy a Hasselblad camera because uh, the prices are going up because some people want that back and use them on this although maybe it's not as practical as a completely new medium format digital uh, version of, uh, of a camera but well many people love this uh, vintage look and combine both things but I'm going to speak about the, the, uh, the analog camera not about the digital one so this works by modules. Here it's like you have three parts. Part is the back, which is this is a film back. That part is the body where you actually have the viewfinder, okay? And this part is the lens. Everything is changeable, removable. Here I'll remove the back. It means that uh, if I've got uh, this back, film back, and also a digital back, I could be uh, making pictures with my films. And then I say, oh, now I'm going to do digital. I remove this and I put uh, the digital back. Or I want to make color pictures. I've got a color film in there. And I also want to do black and white. I don't want to use all my 12 pictures. To, I don't want to finish the roll to be able to change uh, the film to um, color. So I've got another back here. And it can be, I've got another back here, so it can be prepared with a different film. So I go and change it. And uh, this is really, really practical. There are several kinds of backs. This one is made to go with uh, 120 films, which gives you in this uh, back 12 pictures. There are also versions where you can get 16 pictures, but it's not the same format. It's uh, 645 instead of 66. And also you have bags that are called A24 that give you uh, for uh, 24 pictures, but it's for film of 220 films and they don't exist anymore. So many people will try to sell you on A24 telling you can put a 12 uh, exposure film it's true you can put it in there, but the spacing is different. So maybe you'll get only 11 uh, pictures instead of 12. It won't be as flat. So it means that uh, your uh, picture, when you uh, make it larger, you enlarge it, maybe it won't be as sharp in the, in the, on, on, in the corner. Something else, if you buy one of these back, it's important that really they're set by hand. It's very important that they have you see this number here, 390, okay, they must match the last three number of the serial number of the pack. Otherwise, it means they have not been adjusted perfectly by hand. Some people say it doesn't really matter and they don't have no issues, but some people do have issues. So it's always better. It's, a back is worth a lot more money if you put it, uh, if you have the same serial number. So this is uh, something uh, important. So uh, the way it works is here, this viewfinder. As you can see, I look from the top like this, I see my picture, but in this viewfinder, it's inverted. You look at my finger. So see that it travels, it travels in a different uh, direction, okay? So it means when you're going to frame the picture, that's a problem for some people and for others, it's not a problem. So that's a great thing about uh, 
about Hasselblad, it's everything is interchangeable. You can take off this viewfinder and put a prism one. So actually you look at this and you that's several coins, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, meter, non meters, all that. So that's a good point. As I've got to remove this, this is the glass you're going to use uh, to uh, focus, uh, the focusing screen. That's several coins. This one is a uh, micro contrast. So you actually look at it and uh, when you see it, perfectly sharp you know it's 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 uh, it's, it's focused but that's split system also you can uh, you need to have uh, like two lines that coins that go together there are several kind of uh, of uh, uh, glasses you can actually uh, change them this one is the most luminous it's called an accumate as you can see there's small two small notch here if you don't have these notches uh, this is not an accumate and it's not as luminous and here is everything is mechanical you don't have any battery in there so it's really uh, like if i want to make a picture there are some securities yeah i cannot i cannot make the picture here if i remove this slide here metal slide then i can this is in front of the film it's for safety like as you can see then i could make the picture if I want to remove the back here, it won't leave, let me get out because I've got to put the slide back. Why? Because if the slide is not there, my film is visible and it will be uh, all uh, messed up if I take off the back. Now, yes, I can. Okay. So there are many things that the, when you think this is all mechanical, there's no battery in, in this. This is really something incredible. Here, the lens you have. Uh, the aperture then the speed you can actually make it work together so i'm on 2.8 for example at a uh, 60th of a second and i want to be on f4 so instead of moving one and then the other to compensate i move both at the same time pressing this button here okay also here you have something we don't see much more um, anymore is the ev scale for the exact uh, light uh, so this way i can if i use a meter that give me the ev i can actually do it here you have the focusing uh, scale here i do the, the the focus here it gives me the scale like from 90 centimeters up to infinity this camera they have the shutter it's a leaf shutter which is in the lens so it means that uh, i can synchronize a flash from any speed and the speed here goes from bulb but really it goes from one second up to 500 of a second i can synchronize a flash on this so here i've got a flash connector so i can connect a small uh, cable here that goes to the flash unit and here i also have another button which is for depth of field preview. You know that when you want to do, a, when you want to focus, whether it's autofocus or focusing on any camera, uh, if you put on f8 and your uh, widest aperture is 2.8, the lens will be open at 2.8, so the autofocus or your eyes, if using manual focus, see uh, the most you can. I repeat, there is no autofocus on this camera, eh? but it works the same on any camera. But what you see is not the real depth of field. So actually, if I'm on F8, if I look in there, I see like if it was 2.8. So if I move this button here, okay, it will actually put me the real uh, aperture. So I will see darker. Uh, if I'm F8, for example, I'll see darker than 2.8, but then I will have the real depth of field. So this is a depth of field preview. And here in there, you can see in this box, there is a, there is a mirror i don't know if you can see it properly i can actually lift the mirror if i want if i want to make a picture and i don't want uh, any vibration i can yeah it's and now in the back you see where the film would be okay let me put this back so this camera is uh, really easy to use i mean People say, oh, that's complicated because analog photography. No, once you've done, uh, you've measured the light right and you know the speed and the aperture you want, you can really concentrate on uh, framing. It's just frame fo focusing, obviously, and framing. Uh, it's a square format. So uh, for some people, it's a bit harder. They're not used to them. So uh, here's the format. 
this is the size of the film. Um, people call it, call it 6x6, but really it's not true, it's not 6x6, 56 millimeters by 56, well, so it would be 5.6 by 5.6, okay? Which is twice the size of a, a full frame camera, really. And uh, that's a lot of space. So obviously, if you're going to make picture with uh, that kind of camera and uh, you don't use a digital back, you use analog uh, back, uh, you will need to uh, re uh, to develop your, uh, your films. If you don't know how to do it, or you go to a shop or you learn how to do it, but then if you want to publish them on any uh, digital support, you'll need to scan them. So you can use a, a film scanner or the laboratory that actually uh, did the develop the film for you can actually scan them. Or you can also use your digital camera with a micro lens and uh, you can actually make pictures of the of the negative uh, there are some techniques i'm not going to enter uh, this about, about the i'm not going to give you that detail here okay but it is uh, possible this is by the way i forgot to say this is an 80 millimeter 2.8 which is the equivalent of 50 millimeter in full frame i also also have a 150 millimeter f4 uh let's see these lens are big, this is quite heavy, and uh, this is, the, I think it's uh, probably the most straightforward uh, camera to use. Uh, maybe framing is difficult if you used, uh, if you used uh, this waist uh, level finder, looking from the top for framing, maybe it's not mm, easy, but you get used to it, or you can change and get a prism viewfinder, it depends what you want. While editing right now, I noticed I forgot to say that uh, it's not metered at all, so you will need to use uh, a light meter to use this camera. So just a small, uh, <laughs> it's a bit different uh, situation, but uh, yeah, don't forget, you need a light meter. Uh, there are some prisms with the light metering you could actually use, uh, but I prefer no battery at all in the camera, so I use an external light meter and that's fine for me. So, uh, do, do I recommend this camera? Actually, this is uh, the, the, this camera I made f since uh, the year 57, I think, or 54, I can't remember. The first model was the 500C, then 500CM, then 501C, 500CM, 503CX, uh, uh, 503CW, that's several, okay? So, the first one, the 500C, I don't recommend it because you cannot change the uh, the glass uh, focus the glass you use for focusing but from the cm yes you can because there's several kind and so i think from the 500 cm they all are good difference in one another this one and the 501 cm i think uh there is a different mirror so uh so on some lenses uh if you don't have that uh, different mirror it does some vignetting when you're actually focusing uh once a picture is made, there's no problem. It's just when you are actually focusing. So this has a different mirror. But actually, I think the 503 uh, CW is probably the camera you should not buy if you don't get a really good price because they're really overpriced. Uh, I was very lucky to get it at a really, really, really good price because uh, it was a friend who was selling it. But uh, nowadays, they're really uh, still overpriced. So I think it's better to get the 501 CM uh, because the price is a lot better um, and actually the quality is the same. I mean, the picture will be exactly the same. The lenses are several kind of lens. This is a CFI and CFE. Uh, the CFE has electric uh, contact, uh, so it helped when they issued the first uh, digital bag, but for the rest, it doesn't really matter. And uh, there are C lenses that are older. Uh, but I'm not going to enter all, all in all these details. Some are coated, some are not coated. But the idea is that if you want to try a medium format and you cannot afford the six, seven, ten thousand euros of a digital uh, entry level uh, medium format, uh, entry level that sounds funny to say that for medium format. Yes, but if you look at phase one with uh, forty thousand euros uh, back, uh, yes, uh, six thousand is an entry level, obviously. But if you cannot afford that and you want to do uh, some analog photography, I think Hasselblad is probably uh, one of the best option in SLR in single lens. If you have uh, TLR, the, the like the Rolleiflex or that, you have 66 format also, but you cannot change the lenses and yet there is no digital back. Or you have the Mamiya C330 uh, that I had, uh, I sold it, 
uh, it was great you could change lenses but you cannot put also a digital back or you cannot change the back so you have to finish your roll before being able to change so i think this is really uh, a great medium format camera there are other options uh, but very often they're not six by six so they are the russian version a copy of this so there are many options but this was uh, just to present you my camera i've passed some picture i've made with it and uh, i would say that uh, if you attracted by uh, analog photography uh, this is a great option for me i also have a leica m4p but uh, for me 36 exposure is too many it's too long it takes me too long to finish a roll so i prefer to have 12 only so i prefer this and the format the size is, is great it's uh, when you use that you actually travel in time this is a nice situation nice feeling i, I really like it well i hope you like the video if you feel that it may help anyone uh, you can share it on social network uh, if you have not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here a small bell if you click on it you'll get uh, notified when i upload a new video my website ericgibo.com and if you have any question you can send me an email to info at ericgibo.com or leave me a comment below uh, if you find my phone number please don't send me any whatsapp because i'm saturated with them and I also put links of my gear on Amazon and links of other parts of my YouTube channel in the description. Thank you very much. Bye.